Heidi's project really reminds me of this beautiful part in Susan Stewart's book on longing, narratives of the miniature gigantic and the souvenir, where she talks about the creation of miniature environments and the psychology of experiencing them. And it's actually the smaller that the space is distorts your experience of time. So the longer you feel that you've spent in the space through your mental projection. En route to the studio, I would see the buildings kind of forming from a distance, and it reminded me of where I grew up and kind of navigating according to the periphery of the mountains in the distance. I wanted to take the topography of Cleveland's architecture and turn that into a uh, terrain model. Reading a little bit about the project before I saw the piece, I was sort of prepared to encounter this mountain that was an interpretation of the city of Cleveland. But when you walk in, it is, really is quite an extraordinary feeling to imagine the city laid out beneath this tr blanket of terrain and to sort of question how much you know the city or what you're familiar with in terms of what is where, how things are related. The way I compiled the information together was using modern uh, tools like Google Maps and Wikipedia for uh, building elevations, but I also worked with the Sandburns insurance map from the turn of the century. The terrain model that I built for the project uh, is encapsulated in snow. It uh, definitely embodies the winter here in Cleveland. For our rooftop tour, we started at the northernmost edge of the terrain model at Burke Lakefront Airport. Then we went to, uh, to different downtown buildings in the warehouse district, and then to Terminal Tower, which is one of the higher points on the, on the train model. And, uh, and the vantage point from up in Terminal Tower was after a, f a fresh blanket of snow is um, aesthetically very similar to the, the train model I built for the, for the show. When you look back at these 19th century sort of masters of alpine modeling, you start to think about how much the human hand the human eye plays in this reconstruction. So I think it's really interesting that Andy chose to provide all of these tools for us to actually think about you know, how he thought through the creation, the presence of his hand in creating the models and the positives and drawing on the maps. So you really get a sense of the artist's engagement, the artist's production, as opposed to just this final product. I just kind of wanted to mesh the ideas uh, between these uh, turn of the century Swiss terrain modelers. And what I um, reflect on and see when I uh, enter the city or drive towards the city and see it uh, from a distance. They were, they were asked by, um, by their governments to do terrain models of, of the Alps, miniaturizing something so giant and immense um, and, and showcasing it as uh, something tangible and transportable. I think it's really clear that Andy continues this interest in showing the understructure. You know, in the paintings, it's maybe a little bit more abstracted, a little bit more aesthetically resolved. Here, those elements have a sort of unruly physicality because they're less handled, they're less controlled. They're really part of a process that is a little bit more unpredictable, a little bit more unwieldy. And so there's some interesting relationships between the painting and the sculpture, but also it's an interesting departure or evolution in terms of his practice. I was really struck by his ability to meld these elements of human-made architecture and the natural landscape, and really breaking down what can be a sort of false conceptual break between the two, because really, there's no way that one ends and the other begins. Everything is a system that's really intertwined. Mm -hmm.